Hello, my beautiful people, my friends, and the children of God. How are you today? May the good Lord be with you, guide and protect you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Today, we are going to go into the book of Psalm, Psalm 23. It's a very famous psalm. Some people have used it to make video on finances and other things. But I'm going to read it out and also explain it for you to understand it. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leaded me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leaded me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yet do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. The importance of the Lord is my shepherd. A shepherd describes a more close and devoted relationship, whereas a king might do what is best for the majority. A shepherd knows and still wants each one of his sheep. In the parable of the lost sheep, Jesus says, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he has lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? Luke 15 verse 4. Now, listen. Let me tell you all the meaning of this psalm. A shepherd cares deeply not only for all his sheep as a whole, but also for each and every single one. This is how God cares for us. He knows each of our comings and goings. He knows every hair on our heads. He knows when even one of us is lost and has made every provision to find us through his son Jesus Christ. Why do we need a shepherd? Now, if the Lord is our shepherd, that makes us the sheep, prone to wander, entirely and always reliant on our shepherd, whether we realize it or not. But here's what we need to understand. We can't see God as a shepherd if we don't see ourselves as sheep. When we open our eyes to how much we really need and rely on God for everything, the more we realize His provision in our lives. But if we live in the lie that we can do this on our own, we wander and drift away from our treasure source, looking for satisfaction in an artificial places. So when David says, I shall not want, he acknowledging how completely reliant he is one God as his shepherd. I shall not want because God as a good shepherd will ensure I have everything I need. I shall not want, not because of what I have done or can do, but because God loves me. I shall not want because I know God personally as my shepherd. Now, under a metaphor borrowed from scenes of pastoral life with which David was familiar, he describes God's provisional, provisional care in providing refreshment, guidance, protection, and abundance, and so on, affording grounds of confidence in his perpetual favor. Christ's relation to his people is often represented by the figure of a shepherd. John 10, 14, Hebrews 13, 20, 
First Peter 2 verse 25, 5 to 4, and therefore the opinion that he is the Lord here so described, and in Genesis 48, 15, and Psalms 80 verse 1, and Isaiah 40, 11, is not without some good reason. Yes. Number two, green pastures, or pastures of tender grass, are mentioned not in respect to food, but as places of cool and refreshing rest. These still waters are literary waters of stillness, whose quiet flows invite to response. They are constructed with streams on the one hand and stagnant, offensive pools on the other. To restore the soul is to revive or quicken it. Psalm 19 verse 7, sorry, or relieve it. Lamentations chapter 1 verse 11. Also Lamentation chapter 1 verse 19. Paths of righteousness, those of safety, as directed by God and pleasing to Him, for His name's sake, or regard for His perfections, pledge for His people's welfare. In the darkest and most trying hour, God is near. The valley of the shadow of death is a raven overhung by high cliffs filled with dense forests and well calculated to inspire dreaded to the timid and afford a convert to beasts of prey. While expensive of any great danger or cause of terror, it does exclude the greatest of all to which is, it is most popularly applied and which it terms suggests thy rod and thy staff are symbols of a shepherd's office by them he guides his sheep another figure express god's provided care a table of food oil anointing oil the symbol of gladness cup we represent abundance are prepared for the child of god who may feast in spite of his enemies confident that this favor will ever attend him this beautiful psalm most admirably set before us in its chief figure that of a shepherd the gentle kind and sure care extended to god's people who as a shepherd both rules and fills them the closing verse shows that the blessings mentioned are spiritual. These things are spiritual, those that belong to the Lord. Shepherds and stewardship related Bible verses. John chapter 10 verse 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. 1 Corinthians 4.2 Moreover, it is required of stewards that they be found trustworthy. John 10, 11, 14. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own knows me. There are so many verses I can give you. You can go back and read where God is truly our shepherd. Let us do this. First Peter chapter 2, verse 25 said, For you we are staring like sheep, but have no return to the shepherd and overseer of your soul. Revelation chapter 7 verse 17 says, For the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. In Jesus' name. God is there for you. He is your shepherd. He will provide all you need. What is that thing that you need? Go to God in prayer. As you read the word to him, he will provide all that you need. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. And try to subscribe to Wisdom TV Nigeria. May the peace of the Lord be with you, guide you, protect you. In Jesus' name.